Greetings, minions. It is I, the Flaming Monocle, and I'm here with my very good friend, t Don't you know it? And we're playing the 39 steps again. We're so tantalizingly close to the end, with only four more chapters until completion. I can almost feel Hannay's terror. As we enter the Black Stone chapter, the Foreign Office's meeting with Roya is brought forward in a bid to derail the Black Stone's plot. Yes, what, what, what? The Black Stone. Dum, dum, dum. I think with the death of Mr... What was his name? Carolides. Yes. Now that I know how to pronounce it. Carolides has been shot dead. <gasps> dum, dum, dum. Oh, I love that teapot. <laughs> I came down to breakfast next morning after eight hours of blessed, dreamless sleep. That's like the second or third time in this game he's fallen asleep. I found Sir Walter decoding a telegram in the midst of muffins and marmalade. Yeah. His fresh rosiness of yesterday seemed a thought tarnished. A thought tarnished. The midst of That's muffins a lot of muffins. marmalade. My word. I'm going to use that. <laughs> I had a busy hour on the telephone after you went to bed. <laughs> I got my chief to speak to the First Lord and the Secretary for War, and they're bringing Roy over a day sooner. Now, this wire clinches it. He'll be in London at five. Odd that the code word for a sous chef d'etat major general should be porker. (laughs) He directed me to the hot dishes. And went on, clean these. <laughs> <laughs> Lick them to dry. Uh, not that I think it'll do much good. If your friends were clever enough to find out the first arrangement, they're clever enough to discover the change. I would give my head to know where the leak is. Ah, we believe the there were only five men in England who knew about Royer's visit, and you may be certain there were fewer in France, for they managed these things better there. Sorry, sir. Well, might as well be honest. <laughs> the Wire, page one. Do, 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 do. Roy dines with my chief, then comes to my house where four people will see him. Whitaker from the Admiralty, myself, Sir Arthur Drew, and General Winstanley. Or Winstanley. Winstanley? English names, if I ever heard Oh, jeez, what happened to those names? I, I probably have one. At my house, he will get a certain document from Whitaker. And after that, he'll be motored to Portsmouth, where a destroyer will take him to Havre. And then... I like these sort of code words as well. Mm -hmm. He will never be left unattended for a moment till he is safe on French soil. The same with Whittaker, till he meets Roy. Mm -hmm. All that between muffins and marmalade. That is the best we can do. And it's hard to see how there can be any miscarriage. But I don't mind admitting that I'm horribly nervous. This murder of Carolides will play the deuce in the chancelleries of Europe. Hmm. There we go. Hanny. Hanny's hiding behind the curtain. (laughs) Hanny? I would like honey. To go like some toast with honey. Honey, can you drive a car? Why, <laughs> yes. Well, you'll be my chauffeur today and wear Hudson's rig. You're about his size. You have a hand in this business and we're taking no risks. There are desperate men against us who will not respect the country retreat of an overworked official. Hmm. Oh dear. England. It was a soft, breathless June morning, with the promise of sultriness later. But it was delicious enough swinging through the little towns with their freshly watered streets and past the summer gardens of the Thames Valley. Fifty years later, however... <laughs> freshly watered towns, Remember, they're underwater. This... It is a thriller. England. It's a beautiful, fragrant thriller with that. muffins and marmalade. Pencil tower in the back there. <laughs> That's the Crayola factory. Ah, oh, I see. I don't know, I'm just guessing. <laughs> I landed Sir Walter at his house in Queen Anne's Gate punctually by half past eleven. 
Yeah, Shame we were due by half nine. <laughs> the first thing he did was take me around to Scotland Yard. From, I've just been to Scotland. A, <laughs> no, this is a This yard. is nothing like Scotland. This is a police station. War office. I like the war office coloured in black there. Mm. Northumberland. He had a plasma shield around him, three Indeed. blocks long. There we saw a prim gentleman with a clean-shaven lawyer's face. Is that the El Emerald City in the background? <laughs> with a clean-shaven lawyer's face. We're off to see the lawyer, the Good wonderful evening, lawyer, Lord 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 brought you the Portland Place murderer. The reply was a wry smile. Mm, it would have been a welcome present to Boulevard. This, I presume, is Mr. Richard Hannay, who for some days greatly interested my department. Mr. Hannay will interest it again. He has much to tell you, but not today. For certain grave reasons, his tale must wait for four hours. Then, I can promise you, you will be entertained and possibly edified. I want you to assure Mr. Hannay that he will suffer no further inconvenience. The assurance was promptly given. You can take up your life where you left off. Your flat, which probably you no longer wish to occupy, is waiting for you. And your man is still there. As you were never publicly accused, we considered that there was no need of a public exculpation. But on that, of course, you must please yourself. McGillivray, we may want your assistance later on. Collected McGillivray. That's a name. What do we do with all the collections? Come and see me tomorrow, Hanny. I needn't tell you to keep deadly quiet. If I were you, I would go to bed, for you must have considerable arrears of sleep to overtake. You'd better lie low, for if one of your Blackstone friends saw you, there might be trouble. Dun, of dun, course. Dun. <laughs> you... Can you, I sleep in your bed, sir? You've got some very interesting things to tell us about the war. Now go home. It was a very, it was, it was very pleasant to be a free man, able to go where I wanted, eat what I wanted to eat, sleep where I wanted to sleep. Midday, I went to the Savoy Lounge, ordered very carefully a good luncheon, and then smoked the best cigar the house could provide. But I was still feeling nervous. When I saw anybody look at me in the lounge, I grew shy and wondered if they were thinking about the murder. It was paranoia for you. Indeed. I took some drugs and <laughs> I took a taxi and drove miles away up into North London. I walked back through fields and lines of villas and terraces and then slums and mean streets. And it took me pretty nearly two hours. My God, what a trek. <laughs> I dined at a restaurant in German Street. You know, that... <laughs> cheap street. <laughs> I was no longer hungry and let several courses pass untasted. I drank the best part of a bottle of Burgundy, but it did nothing to cheer me. An abominable restlessness had taken possession of me. No, you need to drink a brewery, Mr. Hanny. That way that'll have an effect. Indeed. I didn't feel like going back to my flat. That had to be faced sometime. But as I still had sufficient money, I thought I'd put off until next morning and go to a hotel for the night. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. It, I, he's a... He could have at least put that up and not squash it. <laughs> Whoops. No, Stop uh, right-clicking. That's how policemen looked in those days. Yes, much thinner. Banana face. <laughs> really, really, really tall hat indeed. I had only been a month under the ban of the law, and it was quite enough for me. Yet I felt curiously at a loose end. Oh, don't be bored. Uh, I felt that great things, tremendous things were happening, or about to happen, and I, who was the cogwheel of the whole business, was out of it. Oh, he's bored again. You no, know, <laughs> look, you only have to wait being... four hours. And everything's fine. So I turned myself in at Blackstone. <laughs> Here was I, a very ordinary fellow with no particular brains, and yet I was convinced that somehow I was needed to help this business through, that without me it would all go to blazes. Mm. I told myself it was sheer silly conceit that four or five of the cleverest people living, with all the might of the British Empire at their back, had the job in hand. Dun, dun, dun. Yet I couldn't be convinced. It seems as if a voice kept speaking in my ear, telling me to be up and doing, or I would never sleep again. It's the narrator. The upshot was that about half-past nine, I made up my mind to go to Queen Anne's Gate. 
The Queen wasn't in, but we thought we'd just hang about anyway, in case. <sighs> Very likely I would not be admitted, but it would ease my conscience to try. One of the new pasties at Greg's. <laughs> the new McDonald's had opened around the corner. On my way, I passed a group of young men. They were in evening dress, had been dining somewhere, and were going on to a music hall. One of them was Marmaduke Jopley. Oh, Jopley, eh? Mm. By God, the murderer! Here, you, you fellows, hold him! That's Hannay, the man who did the Portland Place murder! <laughs> oh. I wasn't looking for trouble, but my ill temper made me play the fool, and the sight of Marmy's imbecile face was more than I could bear. Oh, so he got into a punch up. What's going on here? Oh, this man is the Portland Place murderer! Oh. Damn it all! Make your fellow shut up! Uh, I advise you to leave me alone, Constable. Uh, Scotland Yard knows all about me, and he'll uh, get a proper wigging if you interfere. You've got to come along with me, young man. I saw you strike that gentleman cruel hard. You began it too, for he wasn't doing nothing. I've seen you. You best go quietly, or I'll have to fix you up. Watch him! Watch him! Watch him! Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Well done, oh, Mr. Hannay. Hannay, you had one job to do. Go home and go to sleep. For four hours. I have a very fair turn of speed, and that night I had wings. Red Bull. In a jiffy, I was in Pall Mall, and had turned down towards St. James's Park. I was in handcuffs. <laughs> Happily, there were few people about, and no one tried to stop me. I was staking all on getting to Queen Anne's Gate. Shoo! I brought this policeman with me. <laughs> it's Grand Theft Auto. I must see Sir Walter. My business is desperately important. That butler was a great man. <laughs> Without moving a muscle, he held the door open and then shut it behind him. Sir so Walter is possible. engaged, sir, and I have orders to admit no one. Perhaps you will wait. See here. There's trouble about, and I'm in it. But Sir Walter knows, and I'm working for him. If anyone comes and asks if I'm here, tell him a lie. <laughs> the, the moon is flat. I was seated and told to wait. He returned to the door with a face like a graven image waited to be questioned. This is the house of Sir Walter Bullivant, and I am under the strictest orders not to let anyone, no matter who, interrupt his office. Don't. But it was the Queen. <laughs> what, the, the whole the room was on and... fire? What am I supposed to click on? Yeah, you got to click one thing. Say the Queen thing. Anne, yeah. oh, the, Another newspaper! So I need to read just one thing. Greek premier assassinated. Ah, this is the dude. Yes. Mr. Karolides. Horror descended on Whitehall last night after Greek Prime Minister Car Constantine Karolides was shot dead in London. The murder took place around 7pm in a private apartment in Horse Guards where the Greek premier was office. Was staying at the invitation of the foreign <laughs> office. <laughs> Although the area around St. James's Park was busy at the time, Scotland Yard has released no details of the suspect and the assassin remains at large. Karolides was alone at the time of the shooting and no direct witnesses of the act have been established. Police and security agents have been yet to confirm whether the shooter was located in the room or fired from an adjacent building. Stuff happens. Press pause if you'd like to read this. And this. And this. And Ooh, then read about exciting adventures on a lake. All right, the last one. The water is. Steady rock in the first time. No, I don't think there's anything we really need to know here. Okay. Um. The only thing we need to worry about is um, whether or not Hannay can keep his oh. out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and there, like a shot, was trouble. I hadn't waited long till there came another ring at the bell. The butler made no bones about admitting this new visitor. Come in, officer. I recognised the first sea lord, the man they say that made the new British Navy. He passed my alcove and was ushered into a room at the back of the hall. As the door opened, I could hear the sound of low voices. It shut and I was left alone again. Collected Lord Aloha. 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 It also means goodbye. For 20 minutes I sat there wondering what to do next. Then the door of the back room opened and the first sea lord came out. 
How many sea lords they got in there? And he walked past me, and in passing, he glanced in my direction, and for a second, we looked each other in the face. I had never seen that great man before, and he had never seen me. But in that fraction of time, something sprang into his eyes, and that something was recognition. You can't mistake it. It's a flicker, a spark of light, a minute shade of differences, which means only one thing, one thing only. Fancy a McDonald's? Fancy a tele... I'll, I'll order a pizza. <laughs> Collected the telephone. <laughs> Just... Put it back. Oh. You're over-encumbered. Uh, mm. eh, uh, pick up uh, the receiver, turn it around really? and put it in your ear. No, wrong ear, put it in the other ear. Put it okay. down. Get and it. then speak Anna. into this bit. Lord Alloa's residence, how may I help you? That's the... His lordship returned half an hour ago and has gone to bed. He's not very well tonight. Will you leave him a message, sir? No. Charming, just bring and hang up on people. Not a moment could be lost, so I marched boldly to the door of that back room and entered without knocking. That's such a naughty thing to do. <gasps> and that's the end of the chapter, I believe. Oh my word! Yeah. What will happen next? It's the Sea Lord, obviously, not quite the same Sea Lord that he's trying to be. Perhaps. Because he's allegedly asleep. Indeed. And Ill. the Sea Lord is the leak, perhaps? Hmm? Something to do with Blackstone, perhaps? Find out next time when we play the 39 Steps. Shiver. Sleep well. Sleep <laughs> well.